what's up guys once again you are welcome to our channel today all right guys there is tension in INEX camp as peter ob is about to get a court order to interrogate INEX ict expert on the conduct of the election according to peter ob he said that if this is granted it will go a long way to prove that tenobu actually rigged the election this is actually coming after peter ob software engineer you know, witness was cross-examined by both INEC and, and APC uh, lawyers and he outshined all of them and proved without a doubt that there was no glitch in INEC server as they claimed. So Peter B, in order to get his own pound of flesh, requested that INEX ICT expert be subjected to interrogation. Of course, you know, before this time, there have been rumor that INEC, you know, ICT expert played a role in um, in the malpractices we witnessed during the election. INEC came out and claimed that it was a glitch. Now, you, we all know that in court of law, some of these technicalities is not taken into, um, they don't actually consider it. Tell us in plain terms what it means. Court doesn't know what a glitch is. You know, so right now they came up with this language, but Peter will be software engineer, a forensic expert that audited, you know, all of INEX activity during that time uses what he calls API software, application programming interface, was able to come out and also with the result uploaded to IREV, he was able to prove without a doubt that the election was rigged. So now that Peter B is about to get a court order to interrogate INEX ICT expert, both INEC and APC they are objecting to it. In fact, the most the most uh, the most surprising of it all is INEC, you know, defending APC. People have, people have begun to suspect that INEC is hiding something. You know, when they say INEC rig election, all of that, you know, people came out with some concrete proof. But this is even more concrete. Why will INEC not allow his software engineers or ICT experts to be interrogated if what they did was fair? If what they did was fair. So that is what people are beginning to ask, to know. Is it really, um, is INEC hiding something? Is there anything in INEX cupboard? So we are waiting to see the ruling of his Honorable Justice. If he will allow INEX, you know, ICTS part to be subjected to interrogation. INEX had claimed that, you know, that there was a glitch in their server and all of that, although there were some conflicting reports. In fact, from from a, a former minister of information, Lai Mohammed. Lai Mohammed gave his own version of the technicality INEC claimed they, ex they experienced during the election as being hacking. Lai Mohammed said that some people had wanted to hack INEC server, which is very impossible because according to Peter Obi's software engineer, he said that INEC is hosting their INEC server on Amazon, Amazon Web Services, AWS, and that it was totally impossible to hack Amazon Web Server as it is the most secure web server on the planet. And that even US military and some global you know, uh, companies host their information on Amazon Web Server that what happened on that day is that there was actually a compromise on the part of INEC. So that was what Peter Obi's lawyer actually came out. So he was cross-examined. And during, you know, one of the most um, difficult thing is for you to be get cross-examined by a senior advocate of Nigeria. If you are not careful, they will use technicality and put you in problem. They will put words in your mouth and get you implicated. But Peter Obi's lawyer was able to shine through. We are, we are going to bring you that video. So you stay put. We are going to bring you that video on that. The whole full transcript of what happened is going to be brought to you. So right now, Nigerians are becoming very suspicious of INEC. Why will INEC not allow 
eight ICT expert to be interrogated. According to rumor, we heard that um, the Yoruba guy controlling INEX portal was the one who switched off a switch of ability to use uh, beavers. Those people who could not, those are um, officers in the field, polling unit, you know, officers could not upload. Most of them, the password given to them was totally changed. The password was changed, they couldn't have access to it. Most of them, they just totally turned off the, 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 the internet uh, capability. They put, in fact, they put the, the beavers in offline mode. They put in offline mode. Why majority of the information as well too was uploaded, but was not synchronized with the IREV. It was not synchronized. So there was there was a lot of compromise, you know, according to Peter Obi's uh, uh, software developer, there was a lot of compromise on the part of INEC. And that is why INEC is not allowing its uh, ICTS part to be subjected to interrogation because a lot of truth is going to come out at the end of the day. But Nigerians keep asking. Look at INEC. They spent, in fact, the budget to conduct this election was 300 billion naira. 300 billion naira, and you are not transparent to Nigeria. You just wake up, you announce results, and now the case is in court. All of them, they were saying, go to court, go to court. Both APC and INEC challenged Labour Party and PDP to go to court if they are not satisfied. Now they are in court. What, why, what are they hiding? The case is in court now. The table is turning on both INEC and APC. There is a collusion because if you look at both INEC and APC, they are defending themselves. And the most annoying part is even that of the INEC. That is the most annoying part is the INEC because INEC behaves as if it's a candidate in its own case. That is the way INEC is behaving. Why will INEC be objecting to any you know, uh, uh, query to get information. Like, look at this information here. They were all gotten from INEC, duly signed, you know, and given to Labour Party and PDP, but INEC objected to it being used as evidence against them. They objected. So, people, people see that this INEC, this very